The Hart Montague Trail winds through the town and is a favorite for walkers and cyclists. The path showcases nature at her finest in any season. The striking architecture of Whitehall's older homes and businesses adds much charm and curb appeal to the area. Award-winning bed and breakfast attract visitors year after year. The historic Newfer Adams Theater, now the Howmet Playhouse, is a year-round venue for a variety of dramatic and musical performances, as well as a community gathering place for movies and events. As you can see, Whitehall takes pride in its historic community, so honoring its 150th birthday was a much anticipated celebration. There is new as well as old in the community. Whitehall's commercial district on Colby Street continues to evolve to serve the changing needs of townsfolk. Chain stores and service businesses dot the landscape. But an important part of Whitehall's history sits regally among this stretch of Colby Street, Highway 31, beautiful Oakhurst Cemetery. This peaceful, tree-filled area contains grave sites of many of the town's founding fathers, the Newfers, Mears, Covels, and others. Paying homage to the area's beauty and heritage was no easy task. Planning for Whitehall's sesquicentennial began in 2007 when Mayor Emery Mack Hatch appointed Councilwoman Tanya Kabbalah to head up a committee to plan the celebration. Tanya formed the group that would shape Whitehall's once-in-a-lifetime 150th birthday celebration. The committee studied other towns' sesquicentennial plans, brainstormed ways to mark the milestone, appealed to the public for their input, put together a preliminary budget, and raised funds. Branding the sesquicentennial was one of the earliest efforts, and a logo contest started the ball rolling. The winning design by Montague artist Colette Kufal skillfully depicts Whitehall's lumbering routes and lakeside recreational attractions. This logo was featured throughout 2010 on city stationery, town banners, an historical calendar, a variety of sesquicentennial merchandise, and more. The official sesquicentennial kickoff was held January 11, 2010 at the historic Newfer home on South Mears Avenue. A mayoral proclamation, a poetic reading, committee introductions, refreshments, sales of logo merchandise, and tours of the home were enjoyed. Rather than 
hold a single blockbuster event to honor the city's founding. The sesquicentennial featured a variety of events and activities held at least monthly, many of them at the community's 10-year-old picturesque library. The sesquicentennial committee had help in these efforts. Members worked closely with the city, the White Lake Area Chamber of Commerce, and various community organizations to incorporate the sesquicentennial theme into many of their planned events. Funds were contributed by the Community Foundation of Muskegon County, Mayberry's Barbecue and Catering, Harbor Light Credit Union, and the White Lake Beacon, Alcoa Howmet, retired business owner George Byam, and local citizens. The first program, held in January 2010, featured Tanya Kabala and the history of the Lewis House, a stately, original lumber baron home situated adjacent to the playhouse and recently placed on the historic register due to ambitious restoration efforts of its new owners. Another popular program was 128 Years of Pitkin Drug and Gift Shop History by co-owner Becky Nordlund. Don has worked at Pitkin's now for 57 years, starting in 1953 to a school of pharmacy graduate in 59, and he's been here since. Let's all give him a hand. <laughs> here for 46 years. Whitehall's Changing Architectural Styles by Roger Sharmer proved to be another favorite program. A style show in June highlighted both historic and current fashions. A special feature in July was a sesquicentennial king and queen. Longtime residents and siblings Eleanor Carlson and Charles Svensson in the annual 4th of July parade. August featured a community picnic, birthday cakes decorated with historical scenes, a sesquicentennial band, and a spectacular fireworks display. That same weekend also featured the annual Maritime Festival with all its activities, plus historical boat tours of White Lake aboard the Port City Princess. Additionally, the library held a three-day event on the area's lumbering history with presentations, displays, and a lumberjack show, complete with axes, 
chainsaws, and water. Daniel J. Yakes, Ph.D., and Stephen S. Demos, M.D., introduced their just-published book, Logging the White, The White Lake Lumber Industry, 1837 to 1900. Days of Yore, Remembrances of the Past, was held by White Lake Area Historical Society in September and featured longtime residents who shared their favorite memories of Whitehall's past. But her name was Flame and Mamie. Oh, yes. They call her Flame and Mamie, the surefire vamp, the hottest baby in town. She's a hard scorcher, she's a human torture, she's a gale that brings them down. Now of all those damp and turning mamas, not one compares, for she carries fire insurance on everything she wears, which is as much. <laughs> and when it comes to loving, she's a human oven, but she's hard to understand. Now it may sound funny, but paper money would burn right in her hand. And the fireman so old that he had to retire said she's the hottest thing he's seen since the Chicago fire. <laughs> they call her flaming mammy, the surefire band, the hottest little baby in town. I don't mean baby, the hottest little baby in town. <laughs> The month of September ended with A Walk Through Time, a walking tour sponsored by the Nuveen Community Center for the Arts, period actors who gave brief presentations of life in the long ago Whitehall. October featured two sesquicentennial events, an historical perspective of the Whitehall Leather Company, a month-long photo display at the library by Jerry Grady, as well as postcards of Whitehall's past by former long-term Whitehall Mayor Norm Allman. This is Whitehall sesquicentennial, so these are postcards uh, within the city of Whitehall. In October, the White Lake Beacon published a special sesquicentennial supplement to coincide with the inaugural edition of its predecessor, the Whitehall Forum, first published on October 28, 1869. In November, the Nuveen Community Center for the Arts held a three-week exhibit featuring art and writing projects created by Whitehall area students.
The end of 2010 wasn't the end of Whitehall's sesquicentennial. The first half of 2011 saw the formation of a time capsule and collection of many important materials to preserve for future generations of Whitehall citizens. The Whitehall Sesquicentennial Committee hopes to provide a real-life glimpse of what it is like to live in Whitehall in the early 21st century, and also what was done to celebrate our important sesquicentennial milestone. We fully expect that Whitehall will still be the beautiful and vibrant community filled with the same caring, hometown spirit that residents enjoyed from 1860, when the town was formed, until 2011, when this time capsule was dedicated. May Whitehall's next 150 years be as memorable. <laughs>